Welcome back to Evergreen Nurses channel. Today we are going to see regarding the congenital disorder of gastrointestinal system that is pylori stenosis. It is one of the congenital disorders seen among the newborn and the infancy baby. Let us discuss the disease condition first. We can see what is the meaning of pylori stenosis. Stenosis means narrowing. So pylori stenosis means there will be narrowing in the pyloric lumen that is called pylori stenosis. We can see the definition of pylori stenosis now. Pylori stenosis is a hypertrophy of the circular muscles of the pylorus with severe narrowing of its lumen. So in this case, the food and fluid cannot pass through the small intestine because of the narrowed lumen. Let us see the incidence of pyloric stenosis. About 1 to 2 per 1000 babies are affected with pyloric stenosis. Male babies are commonly affected than the female baby. Let us see the causes. The exact causes of pyloric stenosis is unknown. It may be due to genetic or environmental factor also. Let us see the risk factors for pyloric stenosis. The mainly the sex which I, we have already discussed the male babies are commonly affected than the female babies. When you talk about the race here that black people are less affected than the white people and the premature babies are more common for pyloric stenosis than the full term babies. Let us see the normal pylorus and the abnormal pylorus through this picture. First picture it shows the normal pylorus. Once the baby is taking the food and fluid through the esophagus it reaches the stomach and it get digested partially then through the spyloric spindles it allow the food en to enter into the duodenum. In case of pyloric stenosis, once the baby is taking food and fluid through the esophagus it enter the stomach and it is partially digested but it cannot reach the duodenum because of the thickening of the pyloric muscles. The thickening of the pyloric muscles it will obstruct the food to enter into the duodenum. That lead to distension of the stomach. Finally, it lead to projectile vomiting. Let us see the pathophysiology of pyloric stenosis in detail. Due to some etiological factors, the pyloric muscle become thickened and become abnormally large because of the abnormal larging and thickening. The lumen of the pyloris become narrowed because of the narrowing of the lumen, it is not helping the gastric content to go to the small intestine. So, most of the digested food will be stagnated within the stomach itself and finally, the stomach is distended that lead to projectile vomiting among the babies. Now, we can see the clinical manifestation in detail. Usually the symptom appear within 3 to 12 weeks after the birth of the baby. The important signs and symptoms of uh, this condition is projectile vomiting that occur after the feeding. It is because of the pyloric stenosis. Then there will be a palpable lump in the left side of the upper abdomen because of the hypertrophy of the muscles. Then visible peristaltic wave we can see in the epigastric region and the child will look malnourished and loss of weight because of the poor intake of food and fluid and the dehydration this is mainly due to prolonged vomiting, constipation is due to taking less amount of food and fluid. The finally, the baby feel always hungry and irritable because of uh, this condition. Let us see the investigation that need to carry out for this condition. First, we have to collect the history. It is very important. You have to collect the history from the mother about the nature and the type of vomiting. How far the vomiting is there? The vomiting is projectile or non-projectile whether it is bile stained or non bile stained one. 
every detail must be collected from the parents or from the caregiver then we have to palpate the abdomen so while we are palpating abdomen we can identify some palpable mass present in that upper part of the abdomen then x ray should be taken x ray with the barium meal that reveals there will be a narrow pyloric canal with the delayed emptying of stomach content then usg will show that non passage of gastric content in the proximal duodenum next another thing is we have to take the plain x ray this plain x ray will show some dilatation of the stomach blood test should be carried out to find out the electrolyte serum electrolyte especially the potassium and chloride level should be checked because of the persistent vomiting let us see the complication of this disease condition first one is the failure to thrive then dehydration this is mainly due to the vomiting because of the dehydration child will land up with the electrolyte imbalance also then stomach irritation prolonged repeated vomiting that lead to stomach irritation and some babies also suffer with mild bleeding then treatment for phyloristenosis there is no medical treatment only the surgical treatment the name of the surgery is phyloromyotomy so that procedure of this uh, uh, surgery is named as ramstad procedure here they will divide the muscles of the pylorist to open up the gastric outlet now we can see the pre operative care of baby with the pylorist stenosis in detail first one is the dehydration dehydration of the baby has to be corrected because the child is having prolonged vomiting that lead to dehydration and the alkalosis so you should be corrected with the administration of iv fluids like ringer lactate and the isotonic sodium chloride solution then maintaining intake output chart it is also very essential and recording the urine output and recording the nature of vomiting and the number of stool also should be recorded properly then assess the vital signs and see for any variation in the normal level and we have to administer the smooth muscle relaxant tablet before giving feeding then always encourage the mother to give small and frequent feeding after giving each feeding advise the mother to burp the child after the feeding you have to keep the baby in upright position or make the baby to lie down in the side right side right side with the head of the bed slightly raised daily assess the weight of the child and 6 hour prior to the surgery a stomach wash with the normal saline should be given and pre medication that is atropine should be administered 30 minutes before the surgery we can see the post operative care during the recovery from anesthesia assess the vital signs for any deviation and we have to monitor the behavior of the baby and we have to assess for abdominal distension it may be due to gas or infection and aspiration of secretion is anything is present in this respiratory pathway maintaining the pattern airway if need we have to give oxygen and we have to hydrate the baby with the intravenous fluid that is specially 5% dextro should be administered so after that gradually start feeding with the small and frequent feed then the parental advice the parents should be explained about feeding technique type of food and the positioning of the baby after every feeding and parents also should be explained about the importance of follow up after discharge from the hospital i hope this video will be helpful for you thank you for watching please like share and subscribe